Hi, HartfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday morning, January the 12th. A very interesting weather pattern, especially uh, for the second half of the month of January. The pattern gets active, quite active indeed, and it looks like there will be multiple cold air outbreaks to deal with across the northern U.S. We have a, a threat of some snow or at least rain changing the snow on Thursday in the I-95 corridor region. A lot of details have to be ironed out. Uh, for that particular system, looks like it could be another threat over the upcoming weekend and perhaps a, a third threat during the earlier middle part of next week. Now, uh, none of these may pan out being any kind of a big snowstorm, but uh, we'll have to take each one at a time here and kind of focus in on the details as we get closer and closer to each event because again a very complicated upper air pattern. Let's start off by looking at the 500 millibar pattern with respect to the height anomalies here. This is using last night's zero Z run of the uh, European model here. First of all starting off with uh, high pressure ridging or higher heights than normal uh, centered out over the western part of the U.S. Now as we move forward here that tends to intensify and kind of spreads off to the north and here we go into the uh, uh, middle part of the week right here this is Wednesday morning and you have a strong ridge by this time over the uh, western part of Canada northwestern part of the U.S. the Pacific Northwest. Meanwhile you have a deep trough a deepening trough here extending all the way from the Hudson Bay region of Canada all the way down to the Gulf region. Again, this is by the middle of this upcoming week and watch this trough uh, become very active uh, later this week through the weekend into the uh, first half of next week. We have this uh, intensifying area of low pressure over the uh, Ohio Valley by the time we get to Thursday again this is the day where there can be some snow across the mid-Atlantic region uh, uh, northeast US perhaps coastal areas will see rain changing to snow uh, again a lot of details have to be ironed out for this particular system we go through uh, the latter part of the week into the weekend and here we have a, kind of another trough uh, dropping down south and east into these large-scale upper-level trough. This is on Friday and into the uh, day on Saturday. And, and here uh, we just continue to have this very active weather pattern at the same time. Strong, a powerful upper-level ridge centered over the southern part of Alaska, the west coast of Canada, eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. And we go a little bit farther out in time and yet another upper level trough kind of slides or rotates through the large scale upper level trough. This is now the Sunday Monday time frame and that's not the end of it. Here we go now into the early part of next week. This is a week from tomorrow. We're talking about next Tuesday January 20th. Still some short waves rotating through this large scale upper level trough. A very active weather pattern for the week uh, next week to 10 days or so and here's yet another system that is a possibility by the middle part of next week. Now let's walk through the two meter temperature anomaly forecast maps again using the zero Z run of the European model starting off today with uh, some colder than normal conditions out across the southeastern state but warmer than normal up across the northern plains the uh, certainly the uh, central and western part of Canada. Here we go into the day on uh, Tuesday it turns a little bit milder in the northeastern part of the nation. But here comes a cold outbreak number one here by the time we get to Thursday, Friday time frame. Again, there can be some precipitation in the coastal plain of the Mid Atlantic region on Thursday. It's liable to be rain uh, changing to snow uh, during the day on Thursday. And again, uh, too early to say how much snow can accumulate. And here we go into the end of the week. This is Friday now. Then into Saturday, another cold air outbreak reaches the, the Midwest, the Northern Plains. By the time we get to Saturday and then into the East on Sunday, we go beyond that. Yet another cold air outbreak uh, by the time we get to next Monday, Tuesday time frame here. Again, this is using the zero Z run of the European model and still some widespread colder than normal conditions. Now this is now the latter part of next week. We're all the way out to Thursday the 22nd. I want to go a little bit farther in time 
just to show uh, a continuation of these cold air outbreaks. Here we go all the way into the 25th, 26th of uh, January. We're talking about two weeks out now. And again, this is using the European model run. And some of this is some very, very cold air towards the uh, latter part of January. Now let's walk through the surface forecast maps from the Zero Z European model run. Dry, relatively dry across much of the nation to begin the new work week here on Monday. And then we'll go into the middle week and the latter part of the weekend. And here comes activity number one here. Uh, by the time we get to uh, midweek here, we see the colder air mass dropping south and east across the uh, Great Lakes region. On uh, Wednesday, there'll be a, a cold front approaching the eastern states, and it turns milder on Wednesday ahead of that next cold front. Places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, way up in the 40s, maybe even the 50s in some areas, some rain showers. That cold front passes on by uh, Thursday morning, and there will be the, 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 uh, the the attempt to consolidate a couple of uh, streams of energy in the upper part of the atmosphere, a northern stream with a so southern stream. It does not appear as if those systems will consolidate in time to cause any kind of a big snowstorm in the D.C., Philadelphia, New York City corridor. However, there can be some rain that does change to snow. The European model kind of minimizes that threat right now, but I, I don't think that's set in stone. There certainly can be some snow on Thursday after an initial uh, uh, burst of rain later Wednesday, Wednesday night into early Thursday. Certainly interior sections of the mid-Atlantic northeast U.S. can get some accumulating snow. Again, this is Thursday into Friday. This is now the Friday fo uh, morning forecast map. Those waves of energy do finally consolidate by this time. You see a strong low, 986 low, just east of Maine by the time we get to early Friday. Still a few days away to iron out these details. Then we get that upper level system uh, number two rotating in uh, around the uh, early to middle part of the upcoming weekend. And that too can cause some snow. We'll see if there's time for a more of a consolidation of, uh, uh, again, multiple streams of energy in the upper part of the atmosphere. A band of snow could form along the I-95 corridor region by the time we get to uh, Sunday. This is now Sunday the 18th, uh, 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 an active weather pattern, another system to follow right on its heels crossing the Great Lakes by the time we get to the early to middle part of next week and uh, then even by uh, the middle part of next week yet another system will have to be watched crossing the Great Lakes region and a lot of this air by this time this is now the middle part of next week is quite cold indeed right in this part of the nation from the Great Lakes east to the mid-Atlantic to the northeast US this is quite a cold air mass down across the south let's say from Florida to Texas to California, warmer than normal conditions, but certainly in the northern plains to the northeast, uh, it looks like multiple cold air outbreaks on the way over the next couple of weeks. Now let's show a few other maps here before we wrap this up. This is a, a uh, ensemble run of the European model from last night, and it's the uh, two meter temperature anomalies from the 16th of January to the 23rd. So for this full week, time period, again the middle part of January into the third week of January, quite a bit colder than normal all the way from Hudson Bay region of Canada down to Florida. Again this is using the ensemble run from last night. So this is certainly suggestive of uh, multiple cold air outbreaks during the next week to 10 days or so. Again this is from uh, later this week going into the 23rd of January. Now, another map I'd like to show here, this is from a model run from yesterday morning from the European model, and we're, we're looking here at stratospheric levels, 50 millibar level, in terms of the height anomalies. And the main point I want to make here is uh, this is the latter part of January, January 25th time frame. This is certainly indicating that the stratospheric polar vortex will drop to southern part of Canada here, the Hudson Bay region of Canada by the latter part of uh, the month of January. And that certainly is a cold look to it when the 
stratospheric polar vortex drops southward from the polar region into the Hudson Bay region of Canada. That's a cold air source for the latter part of January for the northern U.S. So this is uh, quite interesting indeed. It's a long-range forecast, but it uh, again shows uh, the idea that that stratospheric polar vortex will stay on this side of the North Pole here during the latter part of January. Well, let me just wrap up with one of these teleconnection indices we like to take a look at. This is the WPO, the West Pacific Oscillation, and it uh, drops into negative territory by the time we get to the middle part of January and pretty much stays down in negative territory for the set last couple of weeks of January. The EPO, which I'm not showing right here, does the same thing. It drops into negative territory by the middle part of the month, stays there through the second half of January. When these two indices drop into negative territory this time of the year, that uh, tends to be favorable signal for cold air outbreaks into the north central U.S., into the northeastern part of the nation. Indeed, that is on the table here as we go through the second half of January. When these two indices, the WPO and EPO are in negative territory this time of the year. That tends to uh, prevent mild Pacific air from uh, flooding the nation from west to east, as was the case uh, during the last week or so. Again, when both of these are negative, uh, it tends to be uh, a movement of the Pacific mild air north and west towards Alaska, towards western Canada before it ever can reach into the western part of the U.S. So this is just a favorable signal for cold air outbreaks to continue through the second half of January. Again, we're talking about the northern U.S., the northern plains, the Great Lakes, the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and northeast U.S. It certainly can stay above normal, warmer than normal, from Florida to Texas to California. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.